All right, guys, welcome to Stock Talk on August 9th. Now, for the most part today, I don't know if you guys were in volatile stocks, and you guys might be, but for the most part, I was looking at general market movement, and I was kind of dozing off because, yes, intraday there was some volatility, but if you guys look at the one-year chart of the SPY, which tracks the S&P 500, you guys can see for the most part it was making yet another very small horizontal candle, pretty much mimicking the last few days. So... It was really a flat day until the last 10 minutes or so in which we started to sell off. You guys can see that we started to sell off significantly. So one thing that was in my mind is, okay, well, it's selling off, but look what happened the previous day. We sold off to the previous low, but we managed to recover back to the previous high. There was really nothing wrong with the chart. Remember, we said that we're bullish with the markets because if it's consolidating horizontally, we are certainly bullish as the markets have been on an uptrend for the past few uh, weeks, actually. So... The one thing is you guys can see that SPY managed to recover, but we collapsed at the end of the market day. That should point to some sort of warning signal or a sign or a starting for a sign of that trend, ch trend change sign. All right, so looking at the one-year chart, you guys can see that we've consolidated for a couple of days and that energy is beginning to be pushed to the downside. Does that mean we're out of the bullish trajectory? Obviously not, right? We talked about the support area at uh, 284 around that area and we talked about the resistance area at 287 right but the energy since the energy is being, being released to the downside we might see some hiccups along the way remember we talked about this in tbix and we'll sh i'll show you the tbix chart in a moment but we talked about this in previous videos that if the markets come down we could certainly retest this area perhaps retest this gap area over here you know that's certainly possible or possibly come down to 284 area but we will still be in a bullish stance. So how do we invest in this kind of market? Well, when there's a dip and it stabilizes, we go into the market. That's the opportunity to go into the market. So anyways, so here's SPY right here, the S&P 500, and we might see some volatility coming up. So looking at TBIX or volatility, um, looking at the one year chart, you guys can see that I pointed at this to you guys last time right? We've gone down, 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 making all-time lows. Today, we made a new all-time low again. But I said, I point out this here. Can you guys see how volatility was making all-time lows down here in this time period? But what happened? We managed to, you know, gap up, you know, maybe for a day, maybe for two days. It doesn't really matter. But that volatility can certainly spike up just a little bit before it goes back down. So um, that's one thing to note. There's volatility. We could certainly see one day it doesn't have to be a week, but one day, maybe even a couple of hours in which volatility starts spiking up, you know, that could be your buying opportunity into the markets. But uh, very interesting signal today. Um, all right, let's take a look at crude oil. Um, so here's 4 slash CL, and you guys can see today, uh, showing you intraday first on the one day, how we, you know, here, here are the market markets open around here. We try to push higher. Okay, so there it looks like there's a lot of volatility, but this is really a one dollar you know gap between down here and up here. Crude oil tried to push higher. You guys know that I entered a crude oil position, but the problem with the crude oil graph, and you guys will be able to identify this um, once you're in the course as well because it is taught to you, um, is that you guys can see how it's horizontal, but it managed to close pretty much on the negative. There has to be some sort of signal that crude oil isn't ready to push up at least just yet. So therefore, I know some of you guys, um, you know, went into crude oil because I went in. But today, I sold the majority of my crude oil position near the end of the day. And the reason is, you guys can see that um, on the one-year chart, I was expecting a bigger bounce. You guys can see the resistance at 67.76, the support at 66.33. I was expecting the very least close green, perhaps close near the resistance at that area. But this signal right here, you know, is crude oil out of the bullish stance? And the answer is no, it's not out of the bullish stance yet. Does anything look wrong with the chart? The answer is no, nothing looks wrong in the crude oil chart in the long term, but in the short term, it's slightly more concerning that why are we not able to close near the resistance area? That has to be a concern. And therefore, you guys can imagine that even though we're holding this um, you know, moving average right here, we have a good chance to retest this moving average at 66.34, okay? That's just something you guys have to watch out for. And therefore, you know, 
I'm telling you guys what I'm seeing, you know, after 5 p.m., right? After 5 p.m., the market has basically closed. And I'm telling you guys, but once you guys are in the course, you guys will be able to see what I see as the markets are moving, as the markets are playing out. And you guys will be able to find that, you know, what's the market doing? What should I do? What, how should I buy or sell? So that, you know, you guys aren't following me just like, you know, what I do is what you do at the end of the trading day or the next day. Because sometimes, you guys can see, in this case, I sold it rather quickly. Um, so, anywho, that's what I'm looking for, crude oil. Um, you guys know that crude oil, UWT, right? That's the ticker that we have to look at. But look at crude oil. There's something concerning about this chart too, right? What happened today? We, even though you guys can see that we tried to move higher, right? We actually moved higher, opened higher today, but we closed lower near the moving average. Not a very good sign for crude oil right now. And therefore, even though it can hold, I need it a couple days to play out. Tomorrow's close will be especially important, right? For crude oil to see what trajectory will go. If crude oil bounces at that support area, sure, there's more opportunities to enter crude oil. But right now, just not definitive informa information right now. So, you know, that's it. All right. Four slash GC gold futures. Uh, gold futures, guys, I could sing a song and the song would last over and over and over again. Nothing has changed on <laughs> Uh, support continues to be around 1210 however we continue to be on the downtrend so it's consolidating horizontally and you know if it goes up great we'll look at JNUG when it goes up but JNUG which follows gold if it goes down that is to be expected can't do anything with gold right now move on 4 slash NG all right here's natural gas we've talked about natural gas many times how it's been on an uptrend and continues to be on an uptrend you guys can see is there anything wrong with this natural gas chart right now no we are still on an uptrend sure we're a little overextended over the 20 ema so we might see a little bit of down days that's not abnormal but as long as we keep above this candle up here at the support at 2.889 we should continue to move and push higher. That's just natural gas and looks pretty solid right now. I mean, you guys can see that natural gas, which follows UGAZ, went up yet another half percent, right? Here's UGAZ. Now, the one thing you guys want to be cautious of is on the 180-day chart for you guys, I said that the resistance is at 69.66. We're nearing that area, and we have a possibility of possibly coming down just a tad bit. You could, as we near the resistance, right, do what? take some of our profits out if you guys were in natural gas you know where, where, wherever if you guys were down up down here you guys would have made by now 12 plus percentile you know just saying that you know if you're in it time to think about taking some profits out right now because we're nearing the resistance area and this this is just how investors work right this is how um you know smart money make money smart <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at a couple of your tickers. Now today, um, I do have some errands to run, so I'm gonna not take a look at every single ticker, but I wanna thank everyone for submitting your tickers today. Um, you know, Thank you so much and keep that up. If, you, if I don't get to your ticker today, um, please resubmit that ticker for the Sunday Stock Talk. In the meantime, guys, hit the thumbs up button if you find these videos helpful. It helps me to see that you guys do like these videos. If you don't like these videos, perfectly fine. You know, and you don't have to like it, but I hope you like it in the future and benefit from it, hopefully. So the first one comes from Shanky8, who's called out some very nice tickers in the past, I think. Um, so here's NOG. And NOG is, uh, here we go. We're, you said that NOG pattern and bounce from earnings like the pattern, your insights very much appreciated. So... Um, all right, so here we go. Um, looking at the one year chart, you guys can see that um, we formed a pretty nice reversal candle here. But unfortunately, I want to take you guys to the three year chart. Um, you guys can see this resistance area very sternly situated at 3.80. And you guys can see that we got rejected here. So even though on the short term, on the one year trend, it looks fine, you know, we could, you know, possibly reverse back up. There's just not enough information. And you guys can see that three-year chart, we have a very stern resistance at the area. You know, 
what's that percentage of profit in that case? You know, that it could possibly be five, six percent, but because we're near the resistance, you know, this is a hard one to um, envision going into right now. Now, if it manages to close above 3.80 or 3.81, then we'll revisit at that area. But you guys can see that even the 200 period moving average is converging at the resistance. You know, that's something to be cautious of right now. All right, Addy Boy, let's take a look at PRU. Uh, do you think that this stock broke out for the upside and or will it come down to the 84 on the weekly chart? Financial sector is going good. So this is prudential and you have to think financial sector is doing good. I agree. However, you have to ask yourself, why did prudential take this long to just now to start recovering? And we're looking at um, the three year chart. So let me take you like to the yearly chart. Why did it take so long? Look at JP Morgan. It's already broken out of its bull flag pattern. Why was this going down so much and just now recovering? There has to be a question mark in the back of your mind when you're looking at these charts. And, you know, looking at the three year chart, you guys can see we're getting rejected at the 20 period moving average. And that is a concern, certainly. If we manage to close weekly above the 150 level, maybe we can revisit this. But you guys can imagine for Prudential. There are so many, as it's gone down, it's made several, several resistance areas. And each resistance area will be a very tough battle for this stock. And therefore, this is just not one that I want to visit. The potential for profit is just not there, even though short-term reversed, long-term, a lot of caution should be involved in this one. All right. Tango Tango, AMAT. So AMAT, let's take a look at this one. So AMAT, the one thing about this trend is you guys can see that we've had a support at $45 around that area. And you talked about a possible bull flag pattern, which sure there's, you know, this hefty uptrend. And then we formed a some sort of kind of lopsided bull flag, but it's perfectly fine. The one thing I don't like about this chart is it's not perfect. And, you know, this doesn't look very definitive in terms of a flag pattern. Sure, we have the potential to push higher. Um, so, you know. The, the problem is, you know, we're still getting rejected at the 20 period moving average. And since this is not very definitive, the, the technical pattern is erratic. And certainly we don't have to t go into erratic pattern. There are better patterns to go into. And therefore, this is not one that I would want to look at, at least right now. Uh, I want to wait for this possibly a couple more weeks to play out. If it goes to the $60 mark, perfect, right? Perfect. That gives me more information the next time it comes down. But just right now, not enough information to make a very decisive decision, in my opinion. Um, Tesla. So with Tesla, yeah, so with Tesla, you guys can see that it's been a very erratic pattern. Also, because of the news, perhaps there's an investigation going on by the Securities Exchange Commission. Perhaps they're, you know, it's going private. Whatever it does, it just looks too... Um, erratic right now. We saw that it was going to break up, but it formed a reversal candle yesterday, and now we're coming back down. And therefore, this is not one that I want to visit right now. Once it steadies out, perhaps things start playing out a little better, um, then we'll revisit it. But for now, I would wait on uh, this one, um, even though you see. So, for example, you guys see Tesla went to 345. Who who knows that who knew that it was going to go to 361? Whatever news can, comes out, you know, I'm not aware of the news because I'm doing the stock talk. Right? I'm not aware of the news, any news that's coming out on Tesla right now. But the problem is, is just hard to see technicals on this chart. So, um, you know, stay just cautious on Tesla. Thank you for your submission, moviegoer. Um, XJX uh, update on the course. Yeah, so uh, we talked about the uh, course will probably be released within the next few weeks. Um, it's going to probably be a fixed cost of $300. Possibly it's a subscription, but we're still looking into that. But it's a very exciting time, and you guys will hopefully benefit with you know all the charts and how to entries, exits, how to make precise, de educated decisions, right? And that's the whole point of trading. So uh, look out for that in the near future. Um, Vicky, so CRM, let's take a look at this one. Let's look at the yearly chart. 
So with CRM, uh, there's really nothing wrong with this chart, but the one problem is we have earnings coming out, I believe, at the end of the month. And you guys can see we're near the resistance area, right? We have a resistance at 149, um, certainly, but we pretty much form, you know, some sort of reversal candle today and near the resistance. You guys can see the res at 146. So this one, we're too high up. It's too dangerous of a territory to make that margin, slim 1% margin of profit is just not worth it for the amount of risk involved. And therefore, um, I would wait for this one. You guys can see the best time to get in was near the bottom or the moving average down here once again, right? But it's not the time right now. So, um, yep. Thank you for your submission. Um, Fernandez. Uh, gush and drip. So I'll take a look at drip because you guys know that gush and drip uh, move inverse of each other. So the one thing I want you guys to pay attention to, to drip, and this is another reason why I exit out of crude oil, um, hint, hint, is looking at drip, it's not a one-to-one -one correlation, guys, with uh, crude oil and drip. However, you guys can see that we are making higher, right? We formed a reversal signal all of a sudden, and now we're moving higher. Isn't that interesting? So drip almost looks like it's already reversed now that's interesting because gush has been pushing higher and higher and higher and now drip is the one that's moving higher and drip certainly has a lot of potential to move up keep that in mind so if you're looking at drip there is certainly potential in this one in the near future i think possibly not right now you know we're kind of overstretched but in the near future evan soxl Guys, I might get through all of your tickers today. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> so here's SOXL. You guys can see this boxed area from 121 to around 135. That's the buy area. Right now, we're not at the buy area. Sure, it can go. It can go up all the way to 181 if it, you know. But right now, it's just not at my buy area. The problem is, just think about this, right? We're on a horizontal pattern, and what happens, if, theoretically speaking, if you bought right here and it started going down, right? Wouldn't you have been devastated, been like, oh man, I should have, you know, gone went in at this area. What if it goes up? You know, I'm not going to be sad. That's going to go up from here. You know, so therefore, the best time is, is down here. Right now, we're near the upper 30% quartile and therefore not willing to risk it right now. Uh, Rico, thank you for your comment about um, Drip and IQ and Netflix and Tesla. Wow. So thank you for telling me all your positions in. Uh, yeah. Drip. Yeah, con congratulations on making money on Drip. So good job on watching that one. Um, Shanky, yep, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think I pointed out that you were talking about... So, guys, this goes to the fact that as a community, we're doing significantly better. Remember in the past few videos, you guys talked about Box and Crocs, and one of which I think is Shanky uh, mentioned at one of these stickers. Look at Crocs today. I don't know, was it the, did I put this one in yesterday or the day before? But one of these days I put it in. Look at what happened with Crocs today, up 3.8%. So, you know, you guys are always asking me like, should I, uh, you know, what are the tickers to watch for this month? When I kind of, you know, talk about these stocks and see good positions, it doesn't mean that you have to invest in them, but I see certainly see potential in some of these and therefore, you know, just taking a look, CROX, what a great trend. Guys, BOX, we talked about it when it was down here. Look what's happening now, right? All right. These are trends that you guys will be able to find all in the course as well. Luis, ARQL. So ARQL is one that I stuck on here as well. I actually briefly looked at it while you were looking at it. And you guys can see that it's been a very unpredictable pattern, right? It's like a staircase where we hit the 50 period moving average and now we're hitting the 50 period moving average, possibly another leg up. So this is a good call out. I like that. The one thing you want to be cautious on is, um, you know, you don't have to catch the first leg up, right? You guys can see that um, we could start moving higher, right? But you guys can see that it takes several days. It doesn't do that all in one day. So if you don't catch the first leg up, it's perfectly fine. You'll have several days to get it. But this is one to watch. Uh, great call out. Good job, Luis. K9. NEP. So NEP, K9. Um, 
All right, looking at this ticker, we're looking at really nothing wrong with this ticker right now. It continuously pushed higher, and you guys can see that the only thing is we might be a little overextended. So if you're willing to wait out for possibly a week or two weeks, you might be able to get in on a better price. And um, you guys can see that on the yearly chart, we did test the EMA line here, and you know we pushed up today. So overall, there's really nothing wrong with this chart, uh, and you know you might be able to find a better area to get in, but great call out once again good job canine and with that thank you very much for watching this video um, if you guys like this video please hit that thumbs up button it helps me a lot just seeing how many guys you know like and benefit from these videos and in the meantime we'll have our next stock talk of course on sunday and yeah hopefully you guys have a great trading day on friday it'll be incredibly interesting to see how the futures do um overnight as well as where um you know, if spy, if my premonitions are correct, I would expect possibly just a small leg down. Um, certainly doesn't have to. Certainly, you know, we can start reversing and going higher to the resistance. But um, you know, that's something to watch in the near future. So, happy trading, and I'll see you guys on Sunday.